Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, welcome for the first time. In today's video, we're going to find out how the feeding of the no climb is gonna work in these corner pieces that we put in. In last week's video, I'm super excited to start stretching some wire on this job. We're gonna do a little test run as you'll find out here shortly. If you don't know what project we're working on, there will be links of previous videos of this project in the description of this video so you can go catch up. But in short, we are working on roughly 300 foot of two and seven eighths post and two and seven eighths top rail. And we're gonna be stretching two by four no climb or horse fencing along the majority of this fence. I've also got some exciting news for those of you that have been waiting on the pipe fence course to open back up for enrollment. It is now open for enrollment. It'll be open from today, September 23rd through October 5th. That's a Wednesday. You can find the course at aroswelding.school. Also, if you're new around here or maybe you just found the YouTube channel, just started watching some of our videos and maybe you've seen the gin pole, the A-frame or maybe even the soapstone I use, you can find digital prints of the A-frame, the gin pole, the gate jacks over on our main website, aroswelding.com forward slash shop. All right, so first things first, we went ahead and welded on some caps right here by the house. Made sure and had our plywood up against the window here that way we didn't get no sparks on the freshly new window on this freshly built house. Once I got the caps welded on, I went ahead and took a four and a half inch sanding pad. I believe I used 40 or 60 grit. I usually like to use a pretty aggressive sanding pad whenever I'm working with metal and I sanded down both caps. Once the caps were all sanded down nice and smooth, I went ahead and tacked up the top rail in between the house and the shop here. Did you realize? I can't remember. Got all the posts tacked to the top rail and then I started welding it out. I mostly use 532 8010 on my pipe fence, but occasionally I will use a 18 6010 or a 532 6010. Both are plenty sufficient for pipe fence. This section is now ready for no climb. Kevin? Oh wait, that can't be Kevin. We're not at the house. It's Kevin's cousin. Sounds just like Kevin. Give me a shot of anxiety there for a minute. Thought Kevin was here to pester us. Got our cap sanded down. Got our rods put on. Now it's time to stretch some wire. All right, here I'm getting prepared to stretch this wire along the barbed wire on the back side of their house here. I built this little hootus, if you will, to hold this roll of no climb. And as you can see here, I tacked some square tubing on either side and I ran some pipe through here. And the idea was to have two people and use the pipe to lift it up into the receiver. But on this particular day, I was by myself, so I had to manhandle it and get a little aggressive with the roll of no climb. Once I got it locked into the receiver hitch, I backed up to the existing H brace and tied it off to the first H brace here. Now 
that we got her tied off down here it's time to take off driving see what happens i'll probably i'm guessing maybe halfway or so pick it up kind of keep it stood up and halfway wire it to the barbed wire fence here just to kind of keep it standing up and continue to drive i'm not really sure yet how it's going to go only one way to find out Stretching no climb is easy, they said. <laughs> Not really. Nobody ever told me that. Nobody ever told me that. I just made it up. Just made it up. My favorite part is coming up, though. The stretching part. So this is the first time that I'm using this little apparatus to stretch this wire. It's a real basic idea. An even more simpler idea would be two two by fours with holes drilled in and running bolts through, which you'll see us use later on in the video to stretch the five foot tall no climb versus the four foot section that we're fixing to stretch with this new Hootis that I've got here. I'm excited to try it out. One of the things that I like about the way I built this stretching apparatus out of metal versus the wood is I just took intact the uh, bolts on one side, that way I wouldn't have to hold a wrench on that back side. So all I have to do is take my impact and run my nuts on and off of the bolts. So it's just a little bit quicker. But the two by four with holes drilled in them works just as well. Also, it just takes a little longer and it's handy to have an extra person on the other side. Got her stretched, tied off down here. Went ahead and put some clips right here. Another satisfying situation. I wanted to use this section as my test run with my new uh, stretching tools that I built. It worked pretty good, pretty happy with it. The only thing I would have done different is I would have put it in the opposite way to where the bolt the the piece with the bolts that are tacked into it was just the opposite of the way i had it because it was kind of a pain to get it out from between the barbed wire and the tight no climb fence the good news is is it's good and tight but that's the only thing i would have done different other than that it worked pretty good and then i started to use clips to hold the snow climb up like regular t-post clips but then i remembered i bought these and this set of pliers these little hootuses here are called hog rings and these pliers here are spring loaded the opposite direction so it holds the clip in there got little divots and you just I love it I literally love this kind of thing I actually heard about these pliers and these hog rings from SWI I believe it is Wyoming fencing they have a YouTube channel you should check them out. They do a lot of different varieties of fence. And on one video I was watching, they were doing chain link and they were using these hog rings to tie the chain link to a, a smooth wire they ran across the bottom and between each post because I thought I was gonna end up running smooth wire along the bottom of this fence, but we decided that we didn't need it. But that's why I got these hog rings. So it worked out good with holding the snow climb to the existing barbed wire. But I just wanted to let you know about SWI because they have a lot of helpful tips over there on their channel 
and they have a website where you can find these pliers and these hog rings. All right, so now it's the most exciting part, in my opinion. I was so excited to get to this point. We are going to find out whether it is going to work to feed this in between the corner post and our corner piece, or if we're gonna have to cut off the corner piece. Need some pliers. Here's some, here's some, what kind you want? I'm just so tickled to see how this works, Dakota. Change my mind, Dakota. I don't know. Uh... Okay, the intelligent thing to do, Dakota. I think what I'm going to do, seeing as how this is going, how it's going, just like I was afraid of, we'll roll this up and I'll uh, cut these corner pieces off, and then we'll get the wire stood up all the way around, and then we'll put the pieces in. Dakota and I gave it our all. Bless Dakota's heart for putting up with my stubbornness because really and truly after I started tucking it through just a little bit, I was like, man, this is this is pretty dumb. You know, I was thinking in my head, but I'm, I'm real stubborn. I'm like, this has got to work. And like I talk about all the time about learning, before I changed my mind, I had already thought about if I had different tools and had longer cables and stuff, I could have put the board on like I was fixing to do, I was actually fixing to put the, the board on that we're gonna use to stretch this wire. And if I had long cables, I could have, or uh, equipment here, I could have hooked onto the equipment and we could have actually kept pulling it through. So all that to say is, again, if I had the right tools, I could, I could do things kind of like how my, how my head wants them to work or whatever, how, how in my mind I, I feel like it should be able to work or whatever. I'm super stubborn is what I'm getting at and bless Dakota's heart for putting up with me. But uh, we gave it our all. I decided against it because I didn't have the right tools to do it that way. So we went ahead and cut off our corner pieces. I backed up in a different area. That way we could take off stretching our wire down the longest part of this fence and then stretch it along the shortest side here where we started to begin with and then weld our corner pieces in and then go down to the other end, tie it on and then start to stretch our fence. So luckily we were still able to use our corner pieces, use the same design that I was hoping. We just had to go about it in a different way. Heck yeah, dudes. And we actually stretched it three different times. Once we got our corner pieces welded in, we went back towards the house, just around the first corner, put our board on, or no, we went halfway in between that long section, the longest section. There's a 130 foot section of, of main post and top rail here. If you missed the previous videos, we went to roughly the middle, maybe a little bit less, put our board on, stretched it, welded our clips on, and the clips held the wire tight up to that point, and then we moved our board down one more time, I believe. Yeah, one more time before our final time. A total of three times. We put our two by fours on, stretched it, welded our clips on, moved our, moved our two by fours down, clamped the wire, stretched it, welded our clips on, and then we did it one more time to the very end. And then it turned out pretty, pretty nice in my opinion.
My favorite is the look from the outside. It just looks real clean. You don't see no wire, you don't see anything. And as you can see here, we added a piece of flat here in the middle because without it, the pipe was bowing a little bit. I didn't expect that obviously, or else I would have went with some bigger pipe. But luckily we had some half inch flat on the truck and we were able to put a piece on each corner and it worked out just great. Super satisfying. It feels good to have this main section of fence all stretched. Something I would do different next time is I would pay closer attention to the to keeping the wire plumb, if you will, because in some around some of our posts, the wire you can tell it's like at an angle. Not a big deal, but with me and appealing to the eye, I just that's something that could be fixed easily just by paying attention. And so if I could do it again, I would make sure the wire stays as plumb as possible. Thanks for joining Dakota and I today as we continued making progress on this fence project. Don't forget to check out our website, arosswilding.school if you're interested in the pipe fence course and our main website for any helpful resources, digital prints, soapstone, or anything else you may see us use in our videos, arosswilding.com. Hope you have an awesome weekend and remember, learn something every day.